Hello, amazing parents. In this video, we are going to be talking all about body mapping. Helping your child expand and refine their own body map is one of the easiest ways that you can support your child at home. Now, what is a body map? For our brains to be able to coordinate our entire bodies, to be able to move through this world, to move through gravity, through space, our brains have to know what parts of us are attached to the other parts of us. How long is your arm? Where does your leg start and end? The more detailed of a body map that your child's brain has, the more complex movements it can coordinate. A more detailed body map allows the brain to create more complex movements, better organization, better coordination, better balance. Now, I don't know anybody who wouldn't benefit from a more refined body map, and I'm gonna prove it to you in a second, but it's especially helpful for children who are developmentally delayed or have hypotonia or spasticity or a combination of those. Now, my daughter has a rare genetic disorder and she basically lay perfectly still on the floor for the first six months of her life. She didn't have those random baby movements that you see neurotypical babies have. Her brain wasn't gathering up the sensory incoming information to be able to figure out where her body was in space, where her arms began and end, what happened when she lifted a leg off the floor. Those random baby movements are a giant experiment and experience for the brain to gather up sensory information and helps to create that body map for the brain. So my daughter's brain simply didn't have that sensory input. Her brain had no idea that her foot was connected to her leg that could be moved if she rolled her pelvis. All of those connections that the brain needs for complex movements just weren't there because her brain didn't have a map of her entire body. So if you're new to this world, body mapping is a perfect place to start because it's so accessible. As parents, you're constantly touching and interacting physically with your child. It's a perfect opportunity to slow down and start to fill any of those gaps that their brain just might have about where their body is in space. And it's a perfect place to start even if you think your child has a fantastic body map. Almost everybody can still benefit from an upgrade in their body mapping. So let's do a little experiment and try it on yourself. And you can do this in a standing or sitting position. Just make sure that you're comfortable. Now simply bring your arms and hands up to shoulder height and just observe them. Just check them out. See where they're at in space with your eyes visually and then slowly bring them down. And then imagine there's an apple tree somewhere up above you and you reach with one hand to reach for an apple and then reach with the other hand to reach for an apple. Just imagine that you're reaching gently for an apple and just notice what parts of you are moving as you're reaching for the apple with one hand and then the other hand. Now with your dominant hand, now I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my right hand, place it somewhere on your non-dominant arm. So my left arm is my non-dominant arm. I'm gonna use my right hand to body map my left arm. And simply run your hand down the length of your arm feeling how long is your arm, how long is the distance from your shoulder to your elbow, from your elbow to your wrist, from your wrist to the tips of your fingers. You can go along the outside edge of your arm and then switch to the inside edge of your arm. You can roll your arm inwards if you want or move your dominant hand inwards, however it kind of feels natural and the most comfortable for you. Now separate your thumb and your fingers and run your dominant hand along your non-dominant arm and just feel the thickness of your arm. Where does your arm get thicker? Where does your arm narrow down? I notice narrowing in my elbow and definitely in my wrist, there's a, although there's a bumpy part there. Notice all the little crevices and valleys Get curious about the shape of your arm and the fingers and the hand. How does everything connect? How wide are things? How long are things? Now take your dominant hand and imagine you've dipped it in a 
puddle of paint and pick a nice bright color. Imagine it's red or blue or green, whatever color you want, and you're painting the color onto your arm. So with my dominant hand, I've dipped it in a paint and I have to paint my entire hand and arm with the paint. So I'm not missing any blank spots of skin. It's all gonna be painted, this imaginary paint color. Oh, get in between the fingers, especially. Get underneath the armpit, around the shoulder, inside the elbow. Make sure every little bit of surface is painted with whatever color you chose. There. And that's great. You can just put your arms down and rest for a minute and just feel the difference between your right and your left arm. Can you notice any difference? I actually already noticed that my left shoulder is a little bit lower than my right now. It feels a little bit more relaxed. What's true for you though? Now slowly raise both hands out in front of you, shoulder height, and just notice if there's any difference in how your hands are. Um, I don't know if you can see, but my left hand is way more forward than my right. It's like my brain is so much more aware of where my left arm is in space. And again, just notice what's true for you and bring your arms down. Now imagine that apple tree up above your head again and just simply reach to grab an apple with your right arm and your left arm and just notice whatever you notice. Is there a difference in how you're reaching up for that apple with your right arm or your left arm? I'm noticing I can reach way further with my dominant hand and more of my body is participating with the movement. So any differences that you notice between your non-dominant arm and your dominant arm, I would love to know down below. And if you did notice a difference, congratulations, your brain was able to take incoming sensory information from yourself, from your own hand, from your touch, take in that incoming information, create a more detailed body map of your non-dominant arm, and your brain was able to use that incoming information to create better coordination, more efficient movement in the arm that you brought your brain's attention to. So that's the power of bringing awareness or attention to different body parts. You can start to fill in any gaps that might, might be missing in the brain of where your body parts are in space. Okay, so I hope that gives you an idea of how powerful simple body mapping can be and how simple and easy it can be as well. We maybe spent one or two minutes body mapping one arm and you were able to notice a difference in the efficiency and coordination of your movement already. So your homework for this week is to go out, use your soft, gentle touch like paintbrushes to body map different parts of your child's body. Remember to go slow. Don't do too much all at once. Less is more. Remember to have fun and we will see you in the next video where we'll go over three different ways to incorporate the simple body mapping in your everyday life with your child. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.